welcome to the Cities in Channel and welcome back. Yeah, we've got a part two here today at the Cities in Channel. We're looking at City Past and we're looking at the 69 70 season. So uh, we've done part one. So this is part two, uh, continuing the look at the history of Manchester City, of course, from 1880. So we've got up to 69 70. And in part one, we left uh, City ill prepared for a, a League Cup final. Yeah, a League Cup final with West Bromwich Albion after a first leg game in Portugal against Academica de Coimbra um, we stayed on to give the lads uh, a bit of sun and uh, obviously everything fell apart a little bit the plane got delayed etc etc and uh, Glim, Glimpardo will mention it in a moment when he took, we look at his uh, little view of the League Cup final against West Bromwich Albion but uh, yeah our league hopes were a bit of a distant memory but uh, of course we'll start with that trip to Wembley on the 7th of March 1970 against West Bromwich Albion so please if you're new to your channel please push that subscribe button push the bell notification on this is vlogs are coming out and you also see some stuff on my film and tv channel as well as all the city stuff so that's of interest have a please have a look at that as well or if you know someone who might be interested in pointing in my direction there's links on the screen for facebook and twitter as well so if you follow a friend me on there do check every couple of days and follow and friend everyone back as well so on there and all your comments are welcome 6970 say we get at the stage now where uh, i can put my own little memories in there's a couple here as well i'll do this part too that uh, uh, to, sort of, to, to share with you my personal memories and let me know your memories as well and your if you're old enough if you're old old bugger like me you let me know your memories if you're a young man just young young guys just you enjoy your sit back and listen listen to these old old fogies going on and well me anyway <laughs> going on about this and leave your comments that'd be fantastic and please you don't have time for a comment or just give us a thumbs up it's nice it's nice to get views but it's nice to get thumbs up yeah, so we're at Wembley, 7th of March 1970. The pitch was an absolute disaster area, uh, which we talked about uh, in part one. Uh, the teams that day, uh, City's team was Corrigan, Buck, Mann, Doyle, Booth, Oaks, Heslop, Belt, Somerby, Lee and Pardo. And uh, Boy Bowyer was the sub Lee Bowyer. And for West Brom, you had Osborne, Fraser, Wilson, Brown, Talbot, Kay, Cantello, Suggett, Astle, Hartford and Hope. Yeah, sub was Chris Wicky. There you are, Mr. Chris Wicky. So, some well known names in the West Brom team there, wasn't there? So, here we go. Yeah, rather than a match report, we're taking this from my dream game, a uh, little feature. They used to have in the City programmes. This is from the 25th of February 1978 against Everton, where obviously Glenn Pardo looks back at the 1970 League Cup fi final as his most memorable moment in football. Yeah, um, so he goes on to say, I've got to go for that game for no other reason that I scored the winning goal at Wembley. What more can a player ask for? It's a once-in-a-lifetime achievement. I've been to Wembley before playing the City side that won the FA Cup the previous year, but even that occasion was overshadowed the moment I scored the winning Winner against West Brom. I can recall the move to this day. Franny Lee went down the wing on the right, chipped the ball over to the far post, and Colin Bell flicked it onto me as I came running in behind him. That came in extra time of a truly magnificent game, made all the more remarkable because of the events leading up to it. Earlier that week, we were in the sun in Portugal for a European Cup Winners' Cup tie, playing on a bone hard ground and earning a goalless draw against Academica de Coimbra. Three days later, we were snowed up in England and ready to play on a mud-bound pitch, the worst condition I ever seen Wembley in. Uh, looked to at the fact that at midnight on the Thursday we were having a meal in a motorway cafe and you can realise that, realise that our build-up for a vital cup final was extreme to say the least. Yes, we went out on the Saturday and played some superb football. It is a League Cup game that is best on record when everything is considered. Despite losing that early goal when Jeff Astle scored after just five minutes, yeah, I remember watching. I think it was a video printer on the BBC One. You couldn't watch, you couldn't watch the match live in those days. Uh, I couldn't get. I was too young to go to Wembley. I didn't get to Wembley until I was four, 13, 14 years old. So I was a bit younger to get. I couldn't go on my own, which uh, <laughs> I was a bit gutted about. But there you go. Yeah, on the video print it came up Astle goal after about five minutes. I remember it coming up five minutes on the on the grandstand thing with the scores and stuff. I was gutted. Um, yeah, so Jeff Astle scored after just five minutes. Back to Glynn. We ran Albion off the park. It was a strange looking formation. We fielded without recognised wingers, but the outcome was never a dull negative match. We hit West Brom with everything we had from the moment they went ahead. And I ask you, how could any team survive under such punishment? Alison's strict fitness programme had meant City, yeah, despite the pitch, had uh, remained strong, and this really told in extra time as West Bromwich and Wilton. I mean, personally, yeah, 
Uh, and I remember listening to a, a transistor radio for this and uh, I was watching Grandstand as well and I actually remember the score coming up we were actually winning 2-1 but because uh, it had gone into extra time Grandstand and World of, World of Sport uh, both went off obviously for the Saturday evening uh, Saturday evening stuff so TV stuff so obviously I would have had to listen to a, a little transistor radio to find out we'd actually won the game and uh, I can't remember being anyone else with anyone else that night I wasn't with any of my mates I think I was just trying to tune in to find out that we've won it. So uh, that was, uh, yeah, not like these days where every, every you can virtually watch every game if you want. But uh, there you go. I don't think my radio was that great either from from memories. But uh, but uh, yeah, I sell. I'm sure I celebrated just as heartily if I'd been in, a bit at Wembley with the rest of the fans. So another parade followed. Yeah, another one. We're getting getting a bit common these, aren't they? Uh, followed on eleventh of March, of course, by a, a dis we had a disappointing defeat then at home by Crystal Palace. A bit of a bit of a fallout, I think, from the uh, League Cup final, and it did lead us into the Cup Winners Cup quarter final second leg against Academica de Coimbra. Who were a bunch of students who were told, and that's what most of them were students. It, was, it wasn't going to be a problem. Nice nil nil draw over there with Slaughter over here. Well, it was a physical game, that's, that's for sure. And Bell and Hesloff went off injured in it. Uh, Doyle also went off, but uh, actually had to come back on. Bravely came back on after treatment, although in no, normal circumstances he would have stayed off the pitch. I mean, it was another nil nil after 90 minutes, and it was, it was a dire affair uh, as it moved into extra time. It was actually one of the first games I attended uh, without my dad. I did mention in part one my dad had passed away the following autumn, autumn 1970, so literally a few months after this. Um, and obviously I was, in the, I was in the actual plat lane with my mates behind the goal. And the match was that bad that at three quarter time when the gates opened... Uh, but hundreds, hun literally hundreds of fans from the Kipax just raced around the entries. Remember the old entries around Main Road? They actually come into the Plat Lane corner went into the corner. Me and my mate were dead chuffed because obviously we got to go and we ran up and, and sang with them. And they, they sort of sung in there like, uh, can you hear the Kipak sing and all this sort of thing to, to the Kipaks, obviously, but still singing back. And then obviously they all emptied and went back to the Kipaks to sing and we, we went with them. That's the first, I think that's probably the first time I ever went in the Kipaks. Uh, I was only 10. Uh, so, and then obviously they had a, had a go, can you hear the Plat Lane sing when they went in the in the Kipaks? And they'd all gone by then. There's nobody in the Plat Lane. And then we all legged around again. And that was how bad the game was. It was just literally from three quarters time up till the uh, last five minutes of extra time because I think we scored quite near the end. And I think we were actually, I was actually back in the Plat Lane when we scored the goal. Uh, the winning goal so it's actually at 9.45 so quarter to 10 in the evening uh, I don't, I'm not sure if I had school the next day, I say I was only 10 years old uh, and I think Tony Towers scored for City obviously in that to give us a 1-0 win very late on and we did get through but to say it's it quite funny with the fans running backwards and forwards from the plat lane to the Kipax and, and singing, I've never seen anything like it, that ne never happened again as far as I know, it's certainly that I've never, but the game was just that awful that <laughs> you, just, you just had to entertain yourselves um, so there you go, it was uh, a 1-0 win for City and uh, a semi-final ahead, obviously, through to the semi-finals and meeting with the formidable formidable German outfit at the time, not one of the better-known names, you know, the, the uh, Schalke 04, who obviously have struggled a little bit these days, don't they? But, uh, yeah, they were a quite impressive outfit at the time. Uh, but uh, there you go. City went into this semi-final on the back of another rare defeat. Yeah, another rare defeat. As we mentioned in part one, we lost we lost an FA Cup game at Old Trafford and we lost again. We lost in the league at Old Trafford. Absolutely, you know, that just didn't happen in those days. We, we didn't have all, I think uh, that was two defeats. I don't, I think, as far as I remember, I think we, we lost four times in the in the space of about six, seven, eight years while, while I was watching them. So it was very rare. And we lost, uh, obviously, after losing 3 0 in the FA Cup, we lost 2 1 in the league as well. So, this was before the uh, the Schalke semi final. And despite a 1 0 loss away at Schalke, there was a lot of confidence. Yeah, we'd lost to an, a late goal in the, around about 80 minutes. Uh, City had played well, and it certainly didn't uh, have didn't confidence that we could actually do the job in the second leg to get to our first European final of course uh, before the before the second leg City also we also lost to a Dennis Stewart goal for Sunderland uh, we also lost away at Crystal Palace where a, a young left back called Willie Donachie made his debut 
And in the fourth shift game of the season, away at Southampton, the, whole, the only highlight in that one was uh, in a drab nil-nil draw. It was apparently a Francis Lee shot that was that wide. It knocked off a policeman's helmet and brought a bit of relief for the crowd. So it wasn't the greatest build-up to the second leg of the semi-final. And it was on to the 15th of April, uh, 1970. A crowd of 46,361. So not capacity, but uh, so we, didn't, we didn't actually get big massive crowds for the European games they're always a little bit down on, on what we got uh, for a really big league game uh, and the home game with the Germans uh, within 40 minutes uh, City had took an aggregate lead we'd actually scored two goals within 14 minutes from uh, Doyle and Young goals and Schalke never really covered a City played some great football Young scored again and Bell and Lee added more goals as City went 5-0 up Schalke did manage a late consolation, but City, City by then were in our first major cup final, European cup final. Yeah, City finished a disappointing season in the league. Uh, as I say, we never quite sort of uh, uh, got above mid-table, really, with uh, two away wins at Leeds and Sheffield Wednesday. And Don Revy, in fact, at Leeds, uh, get his team gave City a guard of honour uh, to honour the fact, obviously, Don Revy, an ex-City player. That was nice of him, and obviously, to honour on our European exploits and the fact we got to a Cup Winners' Cup final. And at Sheffield Wednesday, City actually confirmed Sheffield Wednesday's relegation. Remember, we played in the first game of the season, didn't we? We actually played in the last game of the season. Uh, we actually finished 10th in the league, but uh, sadly, Sheffield Wednesday, we, we were quite an easy victory for City, and Sheffield Wednesday went down that season. Uh, Lee was top scorer, 13 goals in the league, an average crowd of 33,930, so slightly up on the 68-69 crowd. And our biggest home crowd, as it was most times in those days, was against United with a crowd of 63,052. Uh, the European Cup Winners' Cup Finals, we all know, took place in Vienna on the 29th of April 1970. A crowd of estimated anywhere between 8,000 and 12,000. No one's quite sure. There's only 300 Gornik fans there because that's all that were allowed out of Poland. That was all that was allowed out of the country. Uh, so the, there was an approximation of about 5,000 City fans. So that's not too bad going. Uh, witnessed a, a pretty masterful display by City in... in what was not the greatest weather, it stopped raining just before the match, but as the, as the match progressed, the rain got worse and worse. The weather conditions were awful. And although the score didn't reflect City's dominance against Gornick, uh, a Neil Young goal and a lead penalty put City comfortable at 2-0 up at half-time. It wouldn't be City, would it, unless we give our fans something something to worry about. And uh, in typical City fashion, we let Gornick get a goal back. And uh, obviously, there's plenty of bite to the fingernails, etc. Uh, but uh, they never really looked like uh, getting that equaliser. As the match progressed and the rain poured down, and City much uh, City sort of played out the game and played out a two-one win. Uh, officially, of course, that uh, that became City became the first English club to do a domestic and European double in the same season. Leeds had done a similar thing uh, a year previously with the League Cup and the Fairs Cup, but the League Cup wasn't competed for by every team and the Fairs Cup wasn't because you couldn't have more than one team from one city in the Fairs Cup. So obviously, uh, in truth, the true real domestic European uh, Cup double was by City because, I say, there were limits uh, to, to what Leeds had achieved, as I said, by winning the Fairs Cup and the League Cup. It wasn't on the quite the same... Uh, quite the same emphasis as, as City had done it. So, yeah, we have, we have that claim to fame, and I think that's fair to say that uh, that's probably true, and uh, no disrespect to Leeds, but uh, it wasn't quite the same achievement when they did it. Uh, yeah, it was another frustrating night for me and many others. As I said, I was obviously... I'd seen the semi-final against Schalke, but, uh, of course, I wasn't no, no chance of getting to Vienna, not a cat in hell's chance of getting there. But there was an FA Cup final replay, and I do remember watching this on TV, uh, between Chelsea and Leeds on the same night that we were playing in our European Cup. But then I get to see there again, we, we lose out. I mean, I have actually seen most of the game on, on a, a, a pretty dodgy DVD. I think I've got one somewhere that's obviously has been done based on, on, the, on the match. But uh, yeah, and you do, do hear the City fans pretty well. I mean, you can hear the City fans singing, even though it was 5,000, it was all open, there was no stands. So it's quite, quite sometimes hard to make a, a noise in an open, open stadium. But you can certainly hear them. And they say there's no coverage on TV whatsoever. So again, I've probably got my transistor radio out. Was listening to that. 
to find out the results. Probably a school night, but again, that didn't bother me. Uh, uh, I always had a bit of leeway on that front. I lived with my sister, obviously. Uh, obviously, at that stage, Mister my father was still alive, but uh, I sort of could, I could stay up most most nights anyway. So yeah, that was it again. Uh, City fans, we could we couldn't get to watch it unless we went over to Vienna. So uh, we had to find our, whichever means we could to actually listen to the game, if you like. I think we may have had it if if the FA Cup replay hadn't been shown. I think the it's, I think ITV or BBC confirmed that they would have actually shown the game, but obviously the the FA Cup replay took took priority. So another civic reception, another another bus tour this time from the airport with thousands and thousands, tens of thousands lining in the street. Uh, Alison, uh, not one to shy away from from shouting from the rooftop, said that we are the greatest club in Manchester, uh, but apologise that we'd only won two cups and, and not the four that uh, we did mention Francis Lee had hoped we could win as well he, he thought that team could have done the quadruple that season but uh, it wasn't to be uh, it sort of fell well short unfortunately but uh, he did apologise for that but uh, arguably it was City's best season wasn't it I mean alright you take the league title win you take the, the FA Cup win but two two major trophies in one season yeah, I mean, there was nothing to indicate at that stage, was there, that uh, we wouldn't be challenging in the 70-71 season, would they? But uh, I'm sure we'll have a look at that and see what happens. It doesn't quite go to plan, does it? So the team with two trophies sat in front of them, there'll be a, if you watch my 70-71 history vlog, you'll see it. there's a great image, obviously, with the, you've probably seen it, I probably I might put it on here as well, if you're now just at the, obviously at the squad with the Cup Winners Cup and the League Cup sat in front, that's absolutely fantastic fantastic image uh, I've got an image there in goal magazine which uh, I'll, I'll put that on screen as well but uh, yeah there's nothing to say that that team there couldn't go on to even bigger and better things come the 70 71 season but uh, we'll have a look at that anyway and uh, join me when we look at that in the history of Manchester City from 1880 Anyway, thanks for joining me today. What are you going to do this today? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your families. More important, let's all look after each other. So with me here again on the Citizen Channel, or perhaps you have a look at my film and TV channel if you want to have a break from football. I only ask one thing of you. Please stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.